Hey everyone and welcome to the video. This is the final part of the super egg drop problem. I'll be introducing the OK log n time solution 01 space solution for this super egg drop problem. I would really advise watching the previous videos before watching this video since I used some of the ideas and notations from those videos as well. In addition, I just wanted to add a caveat to this solution in case you're an interviewer at a company. While I do believe the super egg drop problem is an excellent problem to measure problem solving and dynamic programming proficiency, I believe that expecting this OK log n solution from an applicant is a terrible decision. I've discussed this solution with incredibly bright and famous professors in theoretical computer science in my university, and they all agreed that they couldn't come up with this OK log n time solution in 45 minutes even if their lives depended on it. The only thing you would be measuring is whether an applicant memorized the solution or not, which is hopefully not what you're looking for. If you're an interviewer, I urge you not to expect the solution to pass candidates. The only reason I'm showing the solution is because it's incredibly elegant and beautiful on its own way, but it should never really be used as a form of assessment in 45 minutes. So with that caveat in mind, let's get started. The final optimization for this problem uses a relatively unknown technique known as recurrence duality. The idea of recurrence duality is that almost any optimization recurrence with two variables or more can be written in two ways, one minimization and one maximization. The reason why I say almost any and not all recurrences is because there are some theoretical convoluted examples where this is not possible. But for all practical purposes, almost any recurrence you will come across can be written in two forms, one minimization and one maximization. The classical examples to see this duality is using the knapsack problem. The knapsack problem gives you n items with costs c1, c2, all the way to cn. You can think of the costs as the price you have to pay to buy item i. Also, each item will give you some profit, PI. Finally, you're given a budget, B, which you can think of as your allowance. You're not allowed to spend more than B. And so you want to buy some items, at most one from each item, with total cost at most B. And that maximizes the profit that you can get. For example, Suppose there are four items with costs 5, 6, 2, and 10, and profits 2, 5, 6, and 9. Our budget is at most $10. We can buy item 2 and 3 with cost 6 plus 2, which is 8, and profit 5 plus 6 equals 11. You can quickly verify that this is, it's impossible to get a bigger profit than 11 with a budget of just $10. Now, I'll provide two dynamic programming solutions for this problem that use recurrence duality. These solutions exist in almost any algorithms books out there, so I'll go over them fairly quickly. If there is enough interest, I would be happy to create a video explaining the solutions later on. For the first solution, we will let dp1ib be the maximum profit on items 1 to i if we have a budget b then we have two options. Either leave item i, at which case we try to get the maximum from elements 1 to i minus 1 with the same budget b, or we take item i if its cost is at most b to get a profit pi, and try to find the maximum profit we can get from items 1 to i minus 1 with budget b minus the cost of the item which is ci in this case. Here's the recurrence representing this. Finally, the solution we're interested in is dp1n capital B, the maximum profit we can get from items 1 to n with a budget B. Another solution we can get is to define dp2ip as the minimum cost of the items 1 to i with profit at least p. In other words, we want some items from item 1 to item i such that their total profit is at least p and they have the minimum cost. Again, we have two options. Either leave the i-th element, at which case we search the first i-1 elements for a subset with a profit of at least p, 
Or we take item i and pay ci in cost, but only search the first i minus 1 elements for a profit of p minus the profit of i, or p minus pi in this case. Here's the recurrence representing this. The final solution would be the maximum profit p such that the cost dp2np is at most b, the maximum profit we can get from items 1 to i such that the total cost is at most our allowance, b in this case. Now we're faced with two interesting recurrences. Both can be used to solve the knapsack problem, and one is a minimization and the other is a maximization recurrence. This is an application of the recurrence duality technique. This is not only specific to the knapsack problem, but can be applied to so many other problems, like the bin packing problem, for example. Now, the question here is, can we do this to the egg drop problem? Can we get a re dual recurrence? And the answer turns out to be yes. Previously, we defined dpnk as the minimum number of moves to search n floors with k eggs. Now, let's try to define the dual recurrence. Let dp2tk define the maximum number of floors we can search with t egg drop turns and having at most k eggs. But in this case, what should the recurrence be? Let's imagine while we are solving dp2tk, we will throw the egg from some floor, any floor really, which doesn't matter. In this turn, if the egg breaks, then we need to make sure we can search the floors below where we threw the egg from with t-1 turns left and k-1 eggs left. So we can just stack dp2 t-1 k-1 floors below where we throw the egg, or the maximum number of floors we can search in t-1 turns and with k-1 eggs. Similarly, if the egg doesn't break, we need to make sure we can search buildings above where we throw the egg in t-1 turns and using k eggs. The maximum number of those buildings is dp2 t-1 k. And just like that, we have derived a dual recurrence. Simply, dp2 t k is equal to 1, the floor we threw the egg from, plus dp2 t-1 k-1, the maximum floors below, plus dp2 t minus 1 k, the maximum floors above. To find the final solution to the problem, we're interested in the minimum number of turns, t star, such that we can search at least n buildings using k eggs. Now, we can again use this recurrence to calculate it in O max of t times k time, but what is mind-blowing about this problem is that there's actually a closed form solution for this dual recurrence. Now, before I show you the closed form solution, I wanted to mention that this problem and many similar problems and recurrence solving techniques are discussed in a book by Helbert Wilf called Generating Functionology, which is an absolutely phenomenal book. This video is not sponsored by this book, but the book is honestly phenomenal and discusses techniques of solving recurrences and problem solving techniques related to this problem, and I highly recommend reading it. Some of the chapters are quite advanced and suitable for graduate students, but I would recommend reading chapters 1 and 4, which should be a bit more accessible and absolutely beautiful in the problems and techniques presented. To show how to solve the recurrence mathematically, we will prove three main theorems. First, we let dtk as the difference between dp2tk plus 1 and dp2tk. The first claim we want to prove is that dtk satisfies dtk is equal to dt minus 1k plus dt minus 1k minus 1. The proof, which I will include for completion's sake, goes as follows. First, write dtk using its definition as the difference of dp2tk plus 1 and dp2tk. Next, expand each of these terms using the definition of dp2 that we just derived earlier. Cancel out the same terms and you get 
dp2 t minus 1 k plus 1 minus dp2 t minus 1 k minus 1. Now we will add dp2 t minus 1 k and subtract it again, or add 0 essentially, as shown in the yellow terms. This is essentially just adding 0 to the previous equation and so shouldn't change the value. But notice that the terms inside each bracket now become dt minus 1k and dt minus 1k minus 1, which were the terms we were interested in. I'll also mention that this proof or technique is very common when trying to solve these types of recurrences, and so for more examples feel free to see the book mentioned earlier. Now if you stare for a very long time at this recurrence, you will notice that it looks like Pascal triangle identity, which brings us to the second claim. We claim that dtk is t choose k plus 1. You can either use induction or remember that the recurrence looks eerily similar to the identity that defines the binomial terms. I've also added the proof here for the completion sake in case you're interested in it. With both claims 1 and 2 proven, we're finally ready to wrap things up. Notice that claim 2 gave us a closed form solution for dtk, but we really want a solution for dp2tk, and not dtk. Claim 3 fixes this. We will now show that dp2tk is simply the sum of the first k binomial terms t choose i as you increase i from 1 to k. The proof uses telescoping sums, which is again a standard technique when doing these kinds of problems. We first write the sum of the right hand side, and recall from claim 2 that t choose i is dt i minus 1. Next, using the definition of dt i minus 1, this is the same as dp2 ti minus dp2 ti minus 1. But this is a telescoping sum. If you write it a few terms of the sum, you will notice that the terms start cancelling out. For example, the orange terms cancel out, and the purple terms cancel out, and so on. So you'll only really be left with dp2tk minus dp2t0, but since dp2t0 is the base case, which is 0, then we finally get dp2tk on the right hand side. Again, I know the solution might seem magical, but it's really using a lot of heavy machinery from generating functions under the hood, which is why all the proofs seem to work miraculously. However, there is definitely a systematic way of approaching these recurrences and how to solve them as described in the book I mentioned. Great! With claim 3 proven, we're finally ready to present the new solution. Remember that we are interested in the minimum number of turns, t star, where dp2 t star capital K is at least capital N, or the minimum number of turns to search at least N floors with K eggs. Notice that dp2 tk is increasing, or monotonic, with respect to t. This is because as we have more and more turns, we can search a larger number of buildings with the same number of eggs. And so we can plot it like this. If we look at capital N, then we're interested in finding T star as shown in the figure. The key idea is again to use binary search. For any fixed T, we can in O of K time calculate the value dp2tk using claim 3. So we can binary search on where T star is at. So let's combine all of this into some pseudocode. First, we know that t star is between 1 and capital N, so we let L be 1 and R be capital N. Then, while L is less than R, we calculate the middle index M. We will now calculate dp2 M capital K. This can be done in O capital K time using the code in red. The key idea here is to notice using some algebra that the term M choose I is equal to m minus i plus 1 over i times m choose i minus 1, the previous binomial term. This lets us calculate dp2mk in just one loop by increasing i from 1 to k. 
We calculate the new binomial term, prod, using the previous binomial term and add it to ANS, the summation we want. Once we've calculated dp2mk, we check to see if its value is at least capital N. Then we know that t star is to the left of m, otherwise t star must be to the right of m. This algorithm takes O of 1 space since it doesn't use any additional memory other than variables, and takes O log n iterations for the binary search, and inside each of those binary searches, it takes O of k time to calculate the yellow curve value. Thank you for watching the video. This is the final part of the super egg draw problem. If you liked the video, please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.